We'll go on to, to lunchtime now here. Uh, breakfast and lunchtime. Uh, Mr. Forsyth, if you'd help us out with that. Uh, you bet. So here it is, it's breakfast or lunchtime. How is that process uh, going to look? And maybe we'll split that up. Maybe you could kind of speak to the secondary and Mr. Diamond and kind of the elementary okay. of how the food services part's gonna work out. Sure. So for secondary for lunches, we're just gonna offer more lunch periods. I think we're going to try and have fewer kids in the lunchroom at a time and also try and maximize our lunch spaces. Um, we're looking at other areas of the schools where we could allow those kids to go to eat their lunch rather than remain in the lunchroom. Um, we'll sanitize lunches, uh, lunch areas in between lunches. Um, at the junior high, we're looking at having four lunches in the fall just to limit the number of students in there at a time. Whereas um, in the past, we've only had two. We've only had two lunches, now four, right. So the fewer kids so will be in there. Half those kids out. Um, we're also going to mark um, seats where, the, where we do not want students to seat. So we, instead of having eight or nine kids around the table, we'll have four. And that'll allow some distancing there during lunch. Um, in between lunches, we'll have our staff sanitize. Of course, all of our lunch staff and our custodial staff will, ma will wear masks at all times. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when we set up arrows, we'll also set up arrows of where we want those students to walk in the order to get their lunch and pick up their lunch. There won't be as many a la carte items available for lunch. Um, everything will have to be pre-packaged, salads and those things will just be pre-made and available for kids. But I don't think kids are going to notice a lot of changes to their lunch um, other than just fewer kids in there um, having lunch at a time and trying to uh, you know, allow for a little more distancing there. And maybe they'll get a, an opportunity to eat lunch outside one day or something that where we can spread out a little bit more. Very good. So. And I'd say a, a couple questions that I've received specific, you know, from some parents to maybe elementary schools and even specifically my setting, but I think relates, I think we're all on about the same page, is one is breakfast, are we still going to provide breakfast? Um, and yes, we are. Um, and, and breakfast is, is pretty easy to socially distance, you know, we'll, but just like the secondary schools, we'll have seats where students can sit or they can't sit. So that'll spread kids out. Um, we are asking that um, if, a, if a child does not need breakfast, if at all possible, the parents wait until about 8 o'clock to bring their children to school. Um, because as we're going to cut back on that morning before school recess um, and, and just send the kids directly to classrooms. And so if they can get there closer to 8, that helps with that. Um, if they need to get breakfast, they'll have breakfast and then go straight to the classroom rather than out to recess. Uh, similar things with lunch, we're going to be, um, all the elementary schools will be staggering our lunches more. So for example, at my school, typically two grades are in having lunch. This year we'll have one grade and, and so they'll have twice the room so we can spread out the students more. And that's pretty consistent across the district. Um, just as far as staggering those, and, and being able to spread the kids out more, and like you said, sanitizing hands before and after, and having clear paths of travel, you know, to where to go to dump your trays and exit the lunchroom, and everything will be trained. So kids can learn pretty quickly and easily the procedures. And they are, they're so we'll better have at procedures it. for all those. So. They're better yeah. at it than us. And adults are, yeah. that's yeah. for sure. So. 